So right across, yeah, like right across, there was a, a, a little, a, it was a junior size pool or whatever, and you could swim laps there. So that's what I was doing. I was, I was going from the jacuzzi to like the, the little cold pool straight into like the lap pool. And then I would go do laps. And that was the best thing for my injuries. Mm. I was literally probably just for at least a month, I'd say. And I, would, I was going every day. That, that I was. Because I had nothing else to do but try and be better. So I went. And I was probably just using arms while I was swimming laps. My legs, I didn't really want to move them. I had more mobility now. But it still hurt. So I was like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm cool. So swam, swam, swam. Started going to DDP's YRG. And it took about three months. And I lost mad weight, which I know is a part of my injury. I feel like it just because I was... And at that time, they were telling me, like, I didn't look fat. But they were like, clinically, at your height and this weight and this... Right. You're obese. And I was like, your mama? <laughs> like, no, I'm not obese. But, but it, yeah, I get your, Like, uh, I get it now. Your body mass index, I think. Yeah, okay. right. I get it, though. Completely get it. And that, that was one of the things. When I was in the hospital and they told me that I was, you know, damn near clinically obese, I was like, oh, shit. I was never obese in my life. Like, when I was a kid... I was always skinny. I was like the fastest kid in my elementary going into middle school. Like even when we were doing Taekwondo and Kempo and you know, all that stuff, like I, I wasn't, I didn't think I was that fat, Right. but apparently I was obese. So YRG definitely helped me with that. And Mm. that's why I want to help other people. Uh, I'm obviously everyone wants to help people. Well, not everybody, but you know, he helped me a, a whole bunch of stages in my life kind of got me there and then and then once i did that i got a little taste of it mm-hmm. and then i met the trainer that i'm working with now which that dude just catapulted what i thought i was doing to what i'm actually doing now like where he's right. just working the hell out of me doing ropes and Every time I go see him, it's something different in this cardio and this cardio and move here. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, he made me realize that change can happen. You just need somebody to really push you in the right direction, hmm. right? If they have the knowledge to get you there and they go in the right direction with you, you're going to see the results. And then it's up to you, your discipline and all that. That's like something else that needs to be learned and and taught if it's not, you know, I don't think that's really taught, but, um, yeah, he, he, he completely just shifted Hmm. my whole life from that. And then, um, and then he went to Brazil. So I, I haven't really mentioned who my trainer is, but, um, he went, he's a part of, uh, a UFC fighters um, squad, I guess. I won't mention it. It's not really important, but he he's up there. He's professional. He knows what he's doing. Like it's not it's not something. So he went to Brazil. He got stuck out there for like five months. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't let him back in, and he just got back. So I see. I messed up by not carrying the discipline while he was gone to keep up with it. And that's something that I'm still learning. I think everyone kind of struggles with it, but some people have figured it out. Some people have just done it long enough where that's it. Like, right. They're good. That's the lifestyle. They made that change a while ago. But that's the point of the my gym thing. And just so people listening, uh, if you can spell that out and then like the na- the actual title and what that means. <laughs> right. And so, so the reason why... I wanted to do my gym is just so if, if let's say you were, you know, whatever health situation you're in at the time and then you come and see us and you start working out with us and people say, oh, wow, dude, you look great. Where do you work out? I wanted them to say, hey, I work out at my gym. 
I want them to take ownership of it. So then they could be like, what do you mean your gym? Like, yeah, you want to come with me? Like, I'll take you to my gym. It'll become your gym. And then, so, but I I wanted to do, I looked up, like, my gym, right, as a JYM. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, some jumper company, like, <laughs> making kids, like, jumpers, like, Batman inflatable will show up at your house. And right, right, right. You get to jump on them. But I was like, this is, I can't do that. So, so, um, it was the my gym that made me think, well, if I just spell it differently, my J I M, like if it was a man named Jim, mm-hmm. I just thought of the acronyms and I just kept it real simple. So it's my J Y M and the J I M stands for journey into me. So again, when you say it, that's you taking ownership of whatever that journey that you want to mm. go on into you. And it can be, I feel like it starts, some people don't have the mental strength mm-hmm. to like start and get that train moving. So if you go work in the opposite and you work on the physical part. Eventually, it gets your neurons and everything's going. Your brain is active. Now you're, like, just happier, more energy. Well, let, let me stop you for a second because that's, that's actually a really, really good point. And that's kind of a, uh, <coughs> a a common theme in life, which is that of momentum, right? Right. So, usually, uh, it seems when a person is on a bad track, mm-hmm. right, they're going in a negative direction, they acquire a certain amount of momentum going in that direction. So it's uh, a negative momentum socially will often bleed into a negative momentum momentum psychologically, which will often bleed into a negative momentum physically, right. so on and so on and so forth. Right. And so sometimes when a person is having an issue kind of getting things going in the right direction in an area where they really, really, really need it, but it's maybe too big of a battle to overcome, it helps to kind of start somewhere small and just build up that little piece of momentum. You know, to use the analogy of the snowball. Right. Just get a little snowball going, and eventually that'll build up with enough power behind it that you can kind of tackle the, the big issue. And so whatever you're working on, whatever you're kind of perfecting and trying to get better at, does inevitably end up becoming kind of a, as you put it, a journey into me or a way for you, an avenue through which one can kind of perfect themselves and uh, move things along in a, in a healthier and more productive direction. Right. No, absolutely. Like, I, I feel like that momentum is a very, like, it's crucial. But again, like you, like you just said, like it, that momentum can go into different highways of your life socially and physically and, you know, psychologically, your philosophy on things. Like, everything starts shifting. But I really, and I'm really starting to believe that you can start physically and then let everything else fall into place. Because I remember, I, I, I'm yeah, we definitely spoke about this prior but um not prior in this you know in this story but just as friends in general like i'm sure we've touched this subject before but i remember saying that it's really difficult for a human being to learn something but it's much more difficult for that same human being to unlearn something hmm. so when we have that momentum maybe younger and it was built in the wrong direction right and then you're like no 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 you're going in the wrong direction they're like no look i've been going here this shit works i get from point a to point b leave me alone that's my momentum and that's again they're sidewinding they're 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 physical they're social like it all blends in they're in a bad mood they answer differently you know get them back on track with the physicality of it and they start working out and then everything else starts firing up, they shift. And then, 
they start learning something new that wasn't really them. And then so they're unlearning right. what they used to do and give them a new... Yeah, it's it's funny. And, you know, I think you mentioned uh, that your trainer, you know, deals with and helps uh, us, you know, certain UFC fighters. And one of the things within martial arts that you find oftentimes is once you've kind of ingrained a certain type of muscle memory... So let's say, just for example, you're a Taekwondo fighter, right? You, right? You've done eight years in your youth as doing Taekwondo. You learn to kick like a Taekwondo guy. Right. Right? Then here you are some odd number of years down the line and you start taking up Muay Thai. It may take you, in some aspects, in some aspects you'll pick up quicker because you have a general athleticism and a general understanding of moving your body, how you want to move your body, but... In regards to certain details, uh, you have to first, before you can build the new thing, you have to undo the old thing and then come back and build the new thing. And so it kind of produces this like double work that you have to do. And to your point about, you know, starting out with the physical, there's actually a fair bit of science. And of course, this is my, you know, bro science version of it. Uh, but so apparently they found... Uh, the relationship between your physicality and your mood is a two-way street. So, obviously, when you're feeling bad, you know, your shoulders slouch and your posture is shitty. Correct. And, you know, you don't look people in the eye or what have you. Yeah. But you can actually reverse that and go the other way. So, we know that emotions affect physicality, but physicality also affects emotion. Absolutely. So, as a hack, for example, uh, if you're feeling shitty... Going out of your way to act the part of essentially fake it till you make it uh, will kind of rewire your brain into like, well, my body's feeling pretty happy. I must be pretty happy. And it'll kind of trigger some of those things. Actually, I remember I did telemarketing for a little bit, which I fucking hated. Yeah. I fucking hated telemarketing. But one of the things that they taught us was smile while you're on the phone. Yeah. When you're talking to people on the phone smile because that that physical action triggers an emotional state even if it's not an authentic emotional state it rewires certain things for you to start taking that on absolutely so I, absolutely I, I don't i don't mean to cut you off but um the the whole thing about act you know acting as if and doing all that like i i used to say that before too and then just realize that Acting, the word act, was in the same word when I used to say take action. Mm -hmm. Action is is the same thing. It just, some people, you know, they act just in their brain. And then there's no action. Mm. So they don't get anything. I mean, they think about it. I mean, sh you know, the secret and all that. Like, they got the first part down. Right. But they're not doing the second part, which is getting out there and putting action towards it and, and making it, and building that momentum. Right. To, to be able to, to move because, no, that's that's definitely important. Well, yeah, I'm actually glad that you, you made that point because that ties me into something I was uh, reading the other day. And I'm going to pull it up in just a second. So I think we see this and right now we're kind of talking on a micro, right? A micro level, which is on the personal, the individual. Yeah. But And that is the idea that you can have, um, it's very easy to get caught up in symbolic actions, right? Meaning these are actions that look good, they feel good, they feel like you're making you know, movement and gaining momentum. Okay. Yeah. But it's really just a bunch of symbolism. Nothing, there's no substance behind it. Are you familiar with the term a paper tiger? When you say somebody's a paper tiger? No. Uh, in, in essence, it, it's like if uh, when I'm selling wolf tickets, when I'm uh, bluffing, okay. I'm a paper tiger. So I might look uh, really intimidating. I, I might like sound that. very intimidating. But when you really get up close and examine me, there's right. no real threat there. Right, right, right. Right? Okay. And a lot of times in our actions, uh, you have paper tigers of efficiency or paper tigers of effectiveness. 
And that's on a personal level. But we also see this occurring on a grander level, on a macro level. So I'm going to read this article. This is in the LA Times. And then I'll relate it to, mm-hmm. to what I'm talking about. So the title is, San Francisco School Board Presidents Call for the Renaming of Schools Tied to Slavery. George Washington, the first American president, has his face on the quarter and the one dollar bill. So many things are named after him. Counties, towns, mountains, bridges, lakes, and countless schools. But the president of the San Francisco School Board, Matt Haney, wants to change the name of any of the city's schools that are named after slave owners such as Washington and Thomas Jefferson. This is quote this is quoting the guy now. We should rename Washington High School after San Francisco native poet and author Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou High School. No schools named after slave owners, Haney wrote on his Twitter account Sunday. He said he got the idea Sunday after listening to a sermon by Reverend Amos Brown at San Francisco's Third Baptist Church. Brown spoke of Francis Scott Key, who wrote the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, and of San Francisco's 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, uh, or rather his decision not to stand when it was, uh, when it, meaning the Star Spangled Banner, was played during two NFL preseason games. Haney said that after the sermon, people talked about schools in San Francisco named after Key and other figures who were slave owners. George Washington High School, Haney said, has a mural of Washington with slaves. Thousands of African Americans, he said, have graduated from the school. I'm ashamed that mural is there, Haney said. School names often have led to heated debate in California and across the the country. There's a little bit more. But I, I think you get the gist of what the yeah. guy is going for. Wow. Now, w- while I, I like the sentiment and I like the feeling behind it, from a practical standpoint, what is that really going to do to produce anything in the lives of anything of effective and of any real momentum in the lives of uh, these children that are going there? Meaning... Let's say, just for example, if if we go back to like uh, World War II, me and you were American soldiers, uh-huh. and we bust into this Nazi camp, and there's a bunch of Jews uh, waiting to be put in the oven and to be gassed, and they're eating out of these bowls, and we look at the bowls and goes, look at this, this is fucking horrible. Look at the, <sighs> these bowls and these Jews. Look at all these swastikas everywhere. You know what we're right. going to do? We're going to take the swastikas off the bowls. We're going to replace them with smiley faces. And after that, all these fucking German names that are on the building, fuck that. It's Hebrew names. You know, this isn't Auschwitz anymore. This is, you know, insert Hebrew name here. And after that, bam, mission accomplished. Let's go. Like, yes, it's a nice idea. Yes, it's a nice thought. And at some point, that may actually be the thing to do. But in the grand scale of things... That is not a priority. No, I don't. Yeah, I agree. You know, and I, I, you see this. This is not just within, you know, uh, issues of schools named after slavery. There's a big thing where uh, recently they're, you know, looking to change the mascot and the name of the Washington Redskins mm-hmm. to I don't know what else. Uh, and this is a big, big debate. Apparently, this was a big movement on certain college campuses and just in general. And. When th- when a study was actually done or a survey was done at actual Indian reserves and they said, well, how do you guys feel about the fact that they're finally renaming the Washington Redskins and they're taking off that, you know, racist mascot? It was something like eight out of 10 or nine out of 10 were like, we, we that doesn't affect our lives. We don't give a fuck. Like we have right. issues of alcoholism, of drug use. We don't we have shitty schools. We can't find work. You know, like we have real problems and. Unfortunately, a lot of these things really let you feel like you're doing something without actually having to do something. So let's go and we look at uh, Trayvon Martin, right? Mm -hmm. When Trayvon Martin was killed, tons of of, of people posting pictures in hoodies and, you know, great. I like the sentiment. What is the picture on Facebook of you in a hoodie done? That doesn't stop anything. That doesn't do anything. You know, 
and much like this renaming of school of uh, schools that ends up being wasted time and wasted resources like imagine just for example if instead of spending the money and time that would go into renaming the schools uh, like Maya Angelou school or whatever you have what if a class was opened up that was you know teaching young men, boys and girls or men and women how to invest and save their money that's something that could actually produce some results in somebody's Hands life down. you know down. Um, just look there's a complaint and it's a valid complaint within particularly the black and Latino community that we don't like the way we're represented in media every time we're shown in media we're shown this way we're shown that way but that's not a true representation of all that we are well the middleman within the media has been removed now you don't have to sign up with some major company or with some uh, uh, you know TV um, I'm brain farting here some TV channel or some TV uh, studio in order to get your message out you can go onto YouTube you can put a voice out you can start a podcast you can start a blog you can start a vlog you can mm -hmm. start a web series uh, introducing a class on how to use the resources that you have available to create your own image and your own brand and tell the stories and the, that kind of speak to the voices of the people that you grew up around, that would be a much more productive and effective use of time and resources than swapping a name. No, I agree. I agree. I Actually, I want to add to that. Like, I, when, when you first told me about, like, symbolism, I, I you know what, I kind of... When we we went over this topic just briefly, you know, hey, we might talk about this, and I started thinking immediately, like, fuck that guy, and naming, t shut the, f no. So, but then as you read the article, <clears throat> going to, you know, specifically we, with you saying about imagery and symbolism, now I kind of get it. Mm -hmm. Like, now I get, okay, I get it. These symbols and these images can mean certain things and, you know, they can provide a certain following or, or, or statement from that symbol that can make communities rise or fall. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he's going about it the wrong way. What's done is done. So what's been done and all, like, leave that shit alone. But you, I, I understand where he's coming from, that he wants to change that symbol and that image so that it can reproduce and mean this instead of that. Go make that shit somewhere else then and let that, you know, be a new face and a new coin to what you're trying to say. Not, mm -hmm. not go and change something that's already done. That's like, you know, showing up to a major bank and then just slapping your name on it. But everybody knows that that's the same fucking Chase Bank that they used to go there for 10 years. Right. But now it says, like, Don Robb's Bank. <laughs> Whatever. Go and start, like, a little-ass kiosk somewhere and start off small and teach people about, you know, banking and all that. And then use your – let your symbol grow. Like, then create it and then go down that right. path. Don't – that's not – First like, things like, first. Yeah. You know, it's, it's priorities. And it, and. It's not even, and I don't know that this is necessary. gesture, but it, right, the feeling is I nice. Mean, yeah, it, it's almost like you know. Uh, I remember <laughs> when I was little. I was really little. Like, uh, oh God, I must have been. I would think I was in like preschool or something like that. <laughs> kindergarten. I must have been about kindergarten. And so I had I had a hernia, uh, which is really rare at that young of an yeah, age. Yeah, that shit must. Have I don't hurt. know what the fuck it was. And from. your first hernia, you were yeah, just like, like I'm probably like five or six or some shit. Oh man! Uh, and we had to walk to the little daycare from the school. It was only like two blocks or something like that. <laughs> right, they but, make them so convenient. Like, <laughs> but you know, it was so so painful. I remember finally getting to the school, and they send me into the nurse's office. Right. And I'm laying down. You know those little uh, folding cots that they used to have when yeah, you go yeah, to the yeah. nurse's office yeah. with the little fabric and the metal yes. bars? So I'm laying in that. And I'm just huddled over in pain, just crying and in pain. Yeah. And the nurse uh, apparently had went to my classroom and picked up a uh, fish, like a cutout fish that we had. everyone had to, like, paint and, uh, you know, 
it was a little project. Yeah. So she gets my little cutout painted fish, and the pit fish is smiling. And this was her, you know, trying to cheer me up. She goes, oh, look, Jerome, don't cry. Your fish is happy. <laughs> and our, obviously the language that I was, you know, thinking was not this. But in my version of what a five or six year old was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about this right. fish. What the f- the fish smiling does not make my stomach stop hurting. <laughs> right. Like, nice gesture, but I'm not fucking stupid. Like, right. I know the fish isn't real. Correct. And I know that shit doesn't do anything to the pain that I'm Correct. experiencing. And so, likewise, I don't know that it's necessarily uh, an issue that you have to, like, start a new school or a new anything like that. But it's address the major issue first. Yeah. You know, th- yeah, yeah, let's yeah. say you go from uh, George Washington High to Malcolm X High, right? Mm-hmm. All the kids that are now going to Malcolm X High still have to walk home in the shitty neighborhood, right. go to the same shitty apartment, right. see the same fucking no food refrigerator. Correct. Whatever situation they were living in before you changed the name Correct. is the exact same fucking living situation. Correct. Whoever their parents were, for good or for bad, whatever they had to teach them in the positive, whatever they lacked to teach them in the positive, they still have the same parents. Yep. So all you've done is taken time and money and invested into something that's it is nice. I mean, I, I get what you're trying to get at. Thank you. That's very cute. That's uh, thank you for bringing me my fish. Right. But I'm still fucking in pain because I got a hernia going on. Right. And a lot of the social justice warrior types and a lot of the social issues that we're kind of addressing right now are uh, they're, they're paper tiger solutions. It looks good. It sounds good. The sentiment behind it is nice. But at the end of the day. It ain't doing shit to fix what really needs to be fixed. Right. If anything, it allows people to go, well, ah, I painted five letters on the sign today. I'm a fucking hero. Right. Let me go home and brag to my wife how I'm changing the world. Right. And then yet everyone still goes home and goes to the same bullshit that they went to before. You know? So. I mean, then there's, then there's like... I I I give the man props for trying at least though only because what can you really do when you're by yourself and you're trying to change the masses you he probably has no help and no one standing behind him and well let, you know let, let he's just, trying to just change something but yeah. let, let me say this real quick cuz this, this isn't just his school he's looking to put together uh know, let me see if I can find it hold on I mean, because that kind of makes sense. These, the like Washington Redskins. That's that's in the that's on TV, which then gets broadcast to millions of people. That might make a difference, but you know Jefferson High and Washington High have, you know, maybe fifteen thousand, thirty thousand people that it's gonna maybe hit if they even give a shit, but. You put that shit on TV and you change Washington Redskins' name. But then again, you have to change Washington Redskins' name and symbolize and show to broadcast to millions of people why you did it. It's got to be like a symbol that people now know, oh shit, it's not an Indian. It's, you know, whatever that symbol may be that brings positivity or whatever that message of substance that they have. No, but I like, I like that you said that it's it's basically they're just creating more paper tigers. There's no substance. There's no and and that's that's really the issue with because again, let's take the the Washington Redskins issue. Okay, now it's not Washington Redskins. It's you know fuck conquistadors team, right? <laughs> what is that? I'd doing? probably root for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would as well. Touchdown, fuck conquistadors. <laughs> But what is that doing for the kid on the reservation yeah, whose no. father is an alcoholic right. and who has a shitty school and who's impoverished? Like, awesome, nice thought, but my dad still beats the shit out of me. So how did that help him? But see, this is why I take kind of, I don't take stance behind him, but I'm kind of like in the corner and shit, like just kind of shouting, like... But hey, but 
you know, what, what can you do for that kid that's getting well, beat? Like, let's, what, let's say, for example, what is there a solution? For let's that? say all the people, and you know, it would probably help if I were able to look everything up right now. But just let's say everyone who was involved, uh, if, I believe it was a petition that was put together, if I'm not mistaken, okay. to get that name changed. Okay. Okay. If all of that time and energy that was sent into putting petitions and getting signatures for let's change the cartoon character okay. was put into let's get some better schools over here in this reservation, let's maybe get some uh, you know drug abuse and alcohol abuse programs going over here, let's take the schools that are there and perhaps work some programs into that, that would be a much better use of that time. See... I agree, but all I think about everything you're just saying right now, it all has to do with money. Not necessarily. I mean, look, in order well, to do new schools or to do not even better, to do new schools, I mean, to, even even to hire more police officers to respond to his domestic officers. violence. Or, if when you have a, uh, for example, when they are. You know what? I should look it up if I can. Because it doesn't cost them any money to petition and sign here or sign here. They stood outside of fucking Trader Joe's or, you know, Walmart or whatever the hell. Stood outside and just fucking racked up signatures. Didn't cost them anything. Okay. So let's let's take let's take that. Uh, the legalization of marijuana, for example, right? Okay. That started out through petitioning, right? Okay. And eventually... That worked into some actual action, right? You were able to, through those petitions, uh, put that to Congress or send that to the you know proper individuals. And enough overwhelming support came through that they said, okay, we should act on it. And we should take the resources that we have and put it into this direction, right? Okay. Uh, Nick Diaz, this is uh, was related through the marijuana. Uh, when he got busted on his last thing... He was supposed to be suspended, I think, for seven years. Wait, uh, Nate Diaz? Nick. The... Uh, N- Nate Diaz's brother, Nick Diaz. Oh, the, after the, he fought the, the UFC fighter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got So you. he gets busted for uh, smoking weed. Okay. And USADA, I believe it is, or no, rather, not USADA, uh, the Nevada... Uh, the, the, uh, the Nevada... Commission? There we go, thank you. The Nevada Athletic Commission... Mm-hmm. Uh, Suspended him for I want to say five to seven years and gave him some ridiculous fine, like a, like a ridiculously high fine. And so many people thought that this was unfair that an online petition was put out and they got so much, so many signatures that his uh, his his ban was reduced to two years and his fine was like cut in half. Wow. Now, did that cost any money? No. People signed a petition. But that would have been a that was a much better use of that exact same resource, just the resource of sign this petition, than was you know if they had said well, yeah, but let's change the name of the of the stadium. Okay, but then again, all right, we're talking about Nate Diaz, who's on TV and who, you know, he he's known. Mm-hmm. If Nate Diaz, the UFC fighter, and Nate Diaz from Los Angeles. It were to happen to him, no one's fucking signing a petition. No one gives a shit about Nate from the street. But because Nate is a symbol, and because he's broadcasted to millions of viewers, that petition was able to be successful for him. So that symbolism is important. It is important, but let, let, let me say this. So, for example, with the guy changing the schools, right? Right. This is not What's his just... name? Uh, Matt? Matt? Uh, I said it. Hold on. But the president of the San Francisco school board, Matt Haney, Matt Haney, wants to change the names of any of the city's schools. Not He's not just speaking of his own. So this is not just an action yeah. that he can take on by himself. Right. He still has to go through a process as well. Mm-hmm. This is not like, ah, I just want to change my school. Right. He's presenting the idea that within San Francisco, and I believe, although I could be mistaken, within California in general... Uh, Change the names. If the, if the school has the name of a slave owner, change it. That's not something he's going to be just, well, I'm just going to make this little move by my... This is something that has to go through right. kind of a bureaucracy. Right. So, again, through that, if you're going to go through the steps of going through all of that anyway, you might want to pick a better program 
you might want to pick a better cause. I'm sure there are, like I said, I wish when I was going to school, coming from the background that you and I come from, being mm -hmm. poor, all of that, yeah. I wish that there were some kind of program that better prepared me for life as an adult. That say this is how to properly save and set money aside. Yeah. This is how okay, to invest down. money. Yeah. I this get, is how yeah. you know. Look, if you have a child, by the time you graduate, this is how much you're going to be spending most likely a year into that child that could right. be going towards your future. Right. Th right there right. are better and more productive programs and avenues to 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 send to send those resources down. Yeah. That's all. I'm not saying what the guy is doing is bad. I'm not saying that he shouldn't do it at all. What I'm saying is I have one hand I have one arm where my hand has been cut off. Right. And I have another arm where there's a paper cut. Right. You have more yeah. Let's not worry about the paper cut right, right. now. Let's 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 tie up this fucking bleeding hand that's, right. that's missing. Right. And then we can worry about the paper cut. Right. That's that's where I meant that I agree with him but disagree in the sense that yeah, it's not gonna do anything. Because it's already done. Mm -hmm. That like that's already done. Go start a new program. Go start right. that educational thing. Petition for teaching these kids how to financially be responsible and you know but then again you know what i gotta say this man in schools i feel like there's a deeper sense of knowledge that needs to be taught to us a different type of curriculum which would be you know there need like there was no discipline in in my home too much as far as you know, I had to read 25 books per month. I had to do all of my homework. I had, there was no knowledge based um, discipline. Mm -hmm. There was discipline to wash the fucking dishes and I better keep my room clean and all that shit. But school, it was like, it wasn't really a habit. I didn't have the discipline to get it done. So, what I'm trying to say is, is in school, they're teaching you, you know, you got to... What time did you go to school? Like, what time were we get to school? Like, well, seven I, or something? I, well, that's when I was supposed to get there, but... <laughs> <laughs> See, I was I was getting there early. Whatever... My mom had me prepped. She was just on it. Like, if school started at seven, I was up by six, brushed teeth, changed everything ready, on my way by 6.20, 6.25... School wasn't too far, so I'd get there early enough, go to class. Now, I'd go to first period, learn whatever that is. Like, it might be math, which, let's say, would be AKA our expenses or whatever. How much money do you have in your wallet? That's math class, period one. Then you go to period two, and you do, like, reading or history or whatever the hell. Then you go to nutrition, right? We're supposed to eat and whatever. Then you go to third period, you have like an elective, something you want to do, your hobby, your art, your craft, your music, whatever. Um, then you have science. Then you have, oh, you remember PE? Mm -hmm. Physical education? They forced us to exercise. Mm -hmm. And I say forced because I didn't want to do that shit. Mm -hmm. But we had to do it. We had to change. Blah, blah, blah. Then we went to lunch. Then you had your last period. And then you had your elective if you had one. Then if you were really studious, you had, like, you were in football or you were in uh, music. Like, I was in music. So, you know, you have... And then, point being, you get all of this stuff done from 7 a.m. You've been productive to when you get out of school, which is, like, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of shit. You've counted your finances. You've read your book to gain some knowledge. You've... You know, gave yourself the nutrition that you need. Took a small break there. You got into the hobby that you want to do. Then you go back to work and you're doing the science and the technology or whatever the hell you're doing. Then you go to lunch and then it's 3 p.m. and you've done all these things. Mm -hmm. And then at 3 p.m. you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened to me from the beginning I went to school to the moment uh, till high school. And then after that, as soon as I didn't have to go to school anymore, I didn't have, I, what? I didn't wake up early. 
There was no waking up early. I didn't do six, seven different things. Eight, nine, including my nutrition and lunch. I didn't do nine different things. I wasn't productive. And then three o'clock came. I was like waking up at three o'clock. Let me stop you for a quick second there. Because that's, that's, a, that's a good point. But that kind of ties into my point, which is this. All that fucking seven to three, how much of that was useful in your life today? When you read about the fucking, uh, you know, the, the war at, you know, yeah, 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 wounded no. knee and then this guy came. Yeah. And there is very little of that shit that I learned in school. True. That it has any real life application for true, me today. True. So where I get kind of your, your point that part of school is just kind of providing a certain set of structure and getting you to do A, B, C, and D within a certain limited period of time. Right. Again, the bigger question is, instead of learning about, you know, Washington, uh, you know, being on the boat on the right. River right. Delaware. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some life skills that how to balance right. a checkbook right. probably right. would have done you a lot better. Right. Now... That's exactly what I'm talking about at the same... Okay, my statement in saying that went towards time management. Mm, okay. Which, which in itself should be a course. Yeah, I and, agree. And that's where I feel like school did me good. Now, I didn't find this out until I was an adult. Mm. Thinking back on my childhood, like, oh shit. They were training me mm-hmm. to be responsible, to get shit done. Mm. They were training me to wake up early, do this, do that, eat, do this, do that, do that, eat, break, do this, do that, do that, Mm. then get off, and then do, and then I had the whole rest of the fucking day to do whatever I wanted. Mm. That, that's what I'm talking about. The courses, I feel like there should be something deeper than balancing a checkbook, which should be how we operate is as, as as a responsible adult to get things done. I feel like the discipline in gotcha. getting up got gotcha, you gotcha. and getting things done, that's what needs to be taught okay. as well. As much as the substantial information in itself. Got you. That's a really good point. And actually something that I think uh, in this conversation that bears mentioning is a lot of the way the school system is set up was set up to prepare us for a certain type of work, right? You get up, you go to the factory, you clock in, you do your work, you fill out your paperwork, you put your you know, right. pieces of the machine together, you go to break, you come back, you bump right. back, you bang, 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 get off and go home. We're moving away from that now. I think that we're moving much more now, and this is something I was kind of touching on when I, was, when I mentioned, you know, using under you know uh, a simple after school program uh on how to use the meet the uh internet how to use the social media and the different things that are available to young people right now for free even if you're in the fucking projects even if you're in the barrio yeah you got a fucking cell phone yeah. and you're on youtube oh, and you're yeah. on facebook right and you can take that for free oh yeah and you can make money on that you can take that for free and you can get your voice out of there and you can present an image. Again, like I said, one of the big complaints that we hear is like, well, you know, there's a lot of discrimination. There's a lot of uh, we're, we're being misrepresented. Every time I turn on the black, the, the, the television and I see a black person or I see a Latino person on TV, they're represented as a thug. They're represented as this right. or that. Right. right? How many. Uh, there, there was a point in time. Where if you wanted to present your story, you had to go to a producer, you had to go to a director. There was a certain, there was a middleman who said yes to this idea right. or no to that idea. Right. You don't have to do that anymore. If you have a camera, you have an iPhone, you have an Android, and you have free Wi-Fi at McDonald's, Right. you can put an image out. But see, I get, I, I get that, but that, that, people that, have to, sorry to cut you off, mm-hmm. but... People have to want to go and do that. That's mm-hmm. that's not being taught in... in that's in, kind of my right. point. And how are they going to want to do it unless they can, one, see the value of doing it, mm-hmm. and two, see a way to do it? Yeah, see, this is like a whole new age 
you we're know, moving we're, into we're, a different, you know, into a different. Yeah, where education the, should definitely be yeah. evolving. If I mean, I don't know how it hasn't evolved yet. We didn't have the internet. I mean, we we you remember barely going had. To like, yeah, you the remember internet going came to, around when I was in like fifth grade, dude. Yeah. I remember like. I remember the books coming out. Yeah. Like, behold, the internet is coming. Yeah, this is how you can use it. Yeah, <laughs> shit, man. You know, so the the idea of get up, get a job, go to work, clock in, da da da, 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 da that's slowly starting to change. You're starting to see more and more people taking on. This is my job. You know, where I drive Uber for a while, and then I come home, and yeah, I'm at home, but I'm you know. I'm de- I'm attending to my blog or my this, and then on the weekends I have a job. It's a much different playing field that's coming into in, into yeah. into existence now. Yeah. And so with that, again, while I agree, yes, uh, the the structure that one learns and the getting things done within a certain timeline and how to you know uh, deal with others and to deal with authority. All of these things are valuable tools. All of these things are are good things that we should be learning, but they aren't necessarily uh, applying over into the world that we're in now as well as they could. And so again, much like the changing of the name of the Redskins or the changing of the name of the school Mm -hmm. or the fucking retarded fish or whatever it is... (laughs) Yeah, there's some value there, but how well is that going to apply into addressing the issues that we're coming up with? The days of like, oh, well, you leave you leave school and you go to college and then you take your college degree and you get a career and then you go into that one place and you work there till you turn 60 and then you retire and you get a what? That shit is gone, dude. Yeah. It's not all the way out the door, but yeah, we yeah. got one foot out the door. Yeah. You know, so again, like all the rest of these things there's we're, we're we're not addressing the main issue and in this case what we're talking about now the main issue is how do we prepare the next generation for a new wor- a new type of workforce i think we're really coming into a the era of intellectual property where your value is not going to be so because look there was a point in time where you can go and even if you didn't have an education you can go work at a factory and make a decent living and support a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those jobs are being sent overseas now. Right. There was a point in time where you can work at a call center. Those jobs are being sent overseas. Yeah, now. I hear you. So hear now you. the jobs that are being left or that are available are either highly skilled jobs mm-hmm. or menial service jobs. Mm-hmm. And the in between is kind of being left unattended to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either have to be a worker or. You run... You run some shit. Yeah. And so now there's this gap that's yeah. there. But that gap is now being starting... Start, it, la, 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 la. My mouth doesn't want to work. That gap is now starting to be filled with people who are learning how to take the internet and learning how to uh, take their intellectual property and right. turn that into money. I hear you. But I, I don't know why I want to keep saying this, but I feel like... I agree with you 100% on everything, but I feel that if there isn't this time management implicated in that, because like you said, you could be working Uber, and then you come home, and then you're working on your blog and whatever. I know people that work Uber, and then come home, and then they just fucking sit on the tube and just watch. Jack off all day. Yeah, like they don't do shit. When they have a fucking MacBook sitting right over there in their briefcase or whatever the hell, and they're not jumping on the internet. They're well, not. They just want to chill and veg out and watch TV and you know fuck because I already did my Uber shit. But right. that time management is like no, dude. You fucking you want to watch Real Housewives of fucking Earth <laughs> or you want to like look up some shit and read some stuff and like get this knowledge that'll get you intellectually further than you are now. But it's it's there's also that's why I want to say discipline is important that that like that it, it almost what's that drive that ambition to want to do so how is that taught some I feel right. like some people have it some people don't yeah there there I think there is 
Actually, there's been some studies. I'd have to look it up. So maybe on the next go round. But there have been some studies. Some studies. There have shuddies. been some studies that show that discipline or the ability to uh, withhold against te- te- temptation or to get uh, long-term benefit at the expense of short-term benefit uh-huh. does have some potential genetic propensity. Meaning they took children and they said, hey kids, we're going to sit you down at this table. Ooh, look at these two Oreos. Boy, those Oreos look good. Well, I'll tell you what. If you cannot eat these Oreos by the time I come back, there will be five Oreos, right? And they took these kids and they marked who was able to not eat the two Oreos and who had to eat the two Oreos before they got back. Right. And they actually, like, traced or tracked them and how they were doing throughout the years. And oddly enough, the children who showed a higher propensity towards being able to delay instant gratification yeah they showed some discipline yeah at a very 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 young age mm-hmm. also were showed that same theme and did better on later on in life right so there may be some genetic propensity to that but consider this like pretty much all things we're not all nature and we're not all nurture you know right you can take, for example, some people are maybe more inclined athletically, just naturally, by nature. Yeah, yeah. If that person grows up in a household where they're fed lard and sugar for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, then that athletic nature will go to waste. You can take someone who has a somewhat inferior nature athletically... And if you grow them up in a house or you raise them in a house where they are mandated to run a mile every day and to do, you know, 50 push-ups and put on the fucking wrestling team, they're going to develop some motherfucking athleticism, right? So to tie that in, yes, there may be some inherent propensity towards this or towards that. But I do think you can also take whatever you do have. It's like getting dealt a, a... It's like a card game. Yeah. You can get a good hand or you can get a shitty hand. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win or lose the game. You can also take that and grow that shitty hand yeah. into a good hand and vice what versa. You yeah. You know? I, so... I, I want to... I, I don't want to say there's genetically anything. I think it all just starts from home. Like, what you start learning. What... What you, you know? What well, there, there certainly is some like there. There's there is as far as discipline, as far as athletic, even you know, physicalities. Even with, they well, I, I shouldn't say with discipline. There does seem to be some propensity, at least genetically, for discipline. Um, obviously, I think that's taught. I would think so. I mean, that's what, like that's almost like intelligence, right? Is which we all have. Which yes, but we're talking about degrees, right? Okay. Some people are inherently, they have a higher or a better functioning brain. Okay. Their brain okay. maybe is a bit more mathematically inclined yeah, sure. or a bit more socially inclined. There are different sure. types of intelligences, sure. right? You may be born with a very high social IQ, mm-hmm. but you have a dad that beats the shit out of you and leaves you in a closet. For, you know, seven hours a day. Mm-hmm. There goes that social IQ that you were born with. The the nurture fucked over the nature. Right? Okay. Okay. And on the flip side, you can maybe have a lower propensity towards in, uh, social IQ or mathematic IQ or whatever IQ. But if that's something that's developed and a lot of energy is put into that, you can still grow that to at least average, if right. maybe not a little bit so, beyond. So, I mean, you're so, proving my point. In, sorry, well, I'm, I, I, I don't mean to say that... What I'm saying is it, it's a little bit of both. It's not... You were born with a high propensity towards uh, discipline. Yeah. Therefore, that's it. You will fucking be disciplined at everything. Right, or right. the opposite. It's a balance of the two. But like you just said, if you take one side... And he lacks discipline, and then you make him run a mile every day. That's taught. Yes, that, but that's what can he's be learned. Never going to be as disciplined as the child who has the propensity naturally, who is also nurtured. You see what I'm saying? 
Okay, the then yeah. examples I'm yeah. giving you yeah, yeah, are yeah. opposite extremes. But right. if you even those extremes where you say now here's a kid with low propensity and here's a kid with high propensity, but they come up in exactly the same nurture, the high propensity is still going to do it's, better. Right, right. So again, it's not a one or the other. True. But they that, influence but that's out of, each other. But that's out of your control at that point. Sure. If you were born that way, then you were born that way. Right. Great, good for you. But if you weren't, you can still learn yeah. anything that you don't know or have it wasn't born with. Mm-hmm. You can be taught and you yeah. can learn and then Sure, you can you can improve the hand that you're dealt right. by playing right, right, the right. game right. Exactly. But you still have to acknowledge this is kind of what I was dealt. Right. You know, and so that's where intellectual is definitely gonna have more of an effect now where you're born a certain way, you, you realize that this is what you were dealt, and now you have the option of doing something about it. What are you going to do? Right. Now they have more education, more... Not more education. More I take that back. Now maybe. they have more resources, thank you, to be able to access information and educate themselves. There we go. That's, I think, the most important where it's like... And that's why I like my journey into me. You, what do you want to learn? What do you... What do you want to be? Like, take it back to whatever it is that you want to be. That's what education now is molded to. Whatever you want to learn, you can go and learn it. It's out there. Yeah. It's really out there. You just got to... You know. I want to wrap this conversation up because we're coming to uh, our time limit and there's another article I just want to touch on really quick. Yeah. Uh, but exactly what you're talking about here with, for example, the, my journey into me. Uh, and what we're talking about with symbolic gestures as opposed to effective gestures. Yeah. Uh, really, I think one of the big things that as a society we have to start looking at is how do we empower the individual to do for themselves what society is not able to do? Because to a certain extent, Society will not be able to do for everyone all things. That will never happen. Right. So therefore, it's up to that individual. That's, yes. That's the answer. But there is they no... have to be taught to some extent. Or let me rephrase that. It will be. You will get a much broader group of people people who will be able to do that effectively if they are taught how to do it. Instead of having them bump their heads along the way to figure it out. And that starts early on. So again, we get back to the schooling and, the, and even outside of the schooling, the upbringing within the house. The importance of... That I think is the most important. To yes. Be that, but that's going to be a whole... That's, that's going to take us down a whole separate road. Beat your kids. I'm just kidding. Don't, you know, <laughs> just saying. Discipline though. All right, let me switch this other thing real quick so we can wrap this up. This is from Midday.com. Spiders found to enjoy oral sex. Oh, shit. London researchers have discovered that a spider species that produces nature's largest webs and toughest silk routinely salivate onto female genitalia during mating. The researchers uncovered this mating behavior while studying the Madagascan Darwin's bark spider from Madagascar. Females of this spider species are several times larger and heavier than males. Oral sexual contact seems to be an obligate sexual behavior in this species as all males did it before, in between, and after copulation, even up to a hundred times, said lead researcher Matt Jiz Gregorik, research associate at the Scientific Research Center of the Slovenian Academia of Science and Arts. Gregorik led the field in laboratory work that resulted in the publication of the study in the journal Scientific Reports. Oral sexual contact is rare in the animal kingdom, except in mammals, where fellatio like behaviors are known in macaques. Lemurs, baboons, hyenas, cheetahs, lions, dolphins, and bats. However, uh, cunnilingus-like behavior, like the ones shown in this spiders, are even rarer. The researchers suggest 
that in this spider species, oral sexual counters could be a mechanism for boosting the male's chances of paternity by either signaling the male's quality or creating a chemical environment that would favor one male's sperm against the sperm of rival males. So, eating that spider pussy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually glad you brought this shit up. So, I've always thought, like, when I die, what I want to be reincarnated into. Uh-huh. I'm a fucking spider. Hell I want to yeah. be a spider. Motherfucking Madagascan Darwin f- bark spider. yeah. I just want to <laughs> sit back on some bark. <laughs> and just fucking high five my bro next to me, and we both just sit there and get head. Well, oh, no, that's not the way they're doing it. They're, uh, oh, it's the males doing it to the girls. Yeah, I don't want to reincarnate <laughs> <into spider anymore. laughs> I take that back. I'm uh, fuck. Man. No, uh, that's that's like that's fucking ridiculous. That's crazy. That's like shit. I was about to say that's almost like slavery and shit, but like for us, like jeez, that's. Damn. Well, there you go. That's science. Spiders eat pussy. <laughs> this has been the show. Wait, what's up with the fucking guy's name that fucking Matt Jizz off or whatever? I don't know. I didn't <laughs> name the dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but it's like this guy's just, you know, bringing up oral sex with spiders. And it's like, what's your name? Like, Jizzicon? Like, it, you what? know, there, it's, it's a little ironic that he has it Jizz is. in his name. It is. Yeah, man. This was the episode, brother. Appreciate you coming down. Thank you. Appreciate you recording. Thank you for having me. We'll do it again. I hope you all enjoyed this. Until the next one, peace. Bless.